you paint your jungle and that great way of layering your colors, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. And I am going to just be dropping some colors in Wonderful. wildly. Okay, I have a foreground, middle ground, background when I'm looking at this, this tight knit background here. So I'm looking all through here and I see a foreground, the, the stems that are closest to me, middle ground, some of the leaves that are right behind it, and then the background, which is the darkest shapes, way in the back. Okay, so as you can see here, I've already had painted some of the stems mm -hmm. and some of the little uh, buds. Very I wanted good. to call it a pod, <laughs> but some of the buds that are right up in front. And I'm going to save this one uh, bud to show you how I paint it. Okay. Um, but for now, as you can see here, I've got a little bit of a leaf here with a very soft edge, and then the darkest darks and some of the stems that are up in front. So that's my foreground, middle ground, background, okay? okay? Now, I'm going to take this area here and show you how I got that way. Excellent. How my painting got to show that Show me. Show me, Show please. me. <laughs> okay, so. That beautiful, clean water, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be working with green, so my water is okay. It, it is, is it? okay, yeah. yes. And look, look, it's clean. It is. It is clean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I, I can drop some water in. And let's try this wet into wet uh, process. And um, as I drop water right there, and it doesn't have to be clear water, it can be actually the transparent yellow. You can drop that in, mm -hmm. and here it comes. Okay, the cool thing about this background is that I can dictate what's gonna be really, if I wanna punch up a, a petal mm -hmm. that I've already painted, or if I wanna punch up the white um, poppy, then I, I can go ahead and punch it up with the dark background and just lay some darks right next to it, like you did while your right. paint was wet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so see that? And I can just touch it right up inside there. And, and look at how that poppy just jumps forward. Jumps, glo it, it glows, yes. yes. Okay, now I might drop in a little bit of red, like there's another little pod or bud back there you know, hanging down, see that? So mm -hmm. I'm just developing that like you did. Mm -hmm. but, I'm, but I'm blending on the paper. The difference in, in between your technique and mine is that I am blending on the paper. And then I'm gonna go ahead, drop a little more yellow in there and push that. I'm gonna pull that on down and keep this nice and wet, okay? And as you can see, I already have a, a, a leaf right in there, a little bit of a suggestion of a leaf. Right? Mm -hmm. And then Suggestion watch. Suggestion of a leaf edge. Suggestion of a leaf edge. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Now watch this. Whoosh, whoosh. And there's my little pod or bud. I'm hung up on that word pod, but it does look like a pod. I, I picture it really hard, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's a little um, <clears throat> bud that will be <laughs> cracking and turning into a wonderful, beautiful poppy. Um, I also did not talk about my colors that I mixed up here. So I have transparent yellow, mm -hmm. permanent alizarin crimson, permanent rose, and then I have Windsor green blue shade and a permanent alizarin, alizarin crimson. crimson. PAC. Yes, yeah, so this is permanent rose, and I'm sorry, I call, this is quinacridone gold. Okay. Yes. And so here are my colors, and do you know, you just take the, uh, the green and the red up here. Get a and nice there, yeah, dark. You get your nice dark right there. Okay, I'm gonna drop some more darks in there. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of yellow there. I like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works for me. Now, the only thing when you're painting on uh, one side of the stem to the other side of the stem, you always want to make sure that 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 dark moves. Okay. The dark moves on the stem. The dark from moves one from from one side to the other behind the stem. Okay. Okay. And then here we go. Now I have like a burnt orange here. I'm gonna put a little more quin gold. There's my quinacridone gold. Mm -hmm. And I can take some of that permanent rose and drop that in there. And let's drop some of that, just give it a suggestion. Maybe bring it on that side too. So if, I, I'm, if I'm gonna do something that dramatic on one side of the stem, you wanna bring it over onto the other side so too. So that's something, whatever's behind it Yeah, is. it looks like it's still moving. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You didn't cut, it's yeah. like you just cut it in half, cut but it. it's in back. 
Exactly. Right. You broke the plane. There, yeah. there you go. <laughs> I broke the plane. You broke the plane. <laughs> okay, now, now I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush, and we can get moving here. You can see how I started another one of the buds right, way back in, and it's way back there. Okay. Or it could be even a suggestion that a little bit of light's coming through. And we can go ahead, and I'm going to wet this whole surface, and I'm going to, it's, again, it's the same, it's the same uh, theory. And it's the same technique. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm just going to drop that in there. And I'm going to get some of these golds in here again. I'm going to work this like transparent yellow, mm -hmm. quinacridone gold. I love the golds back here it, with that green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring it on up to the stem and just keep moving it. And you can, you can make this look like a leaf in the background, and you'll be getting a soft edge right there. And then Take some of those darks, and do you see how thick my pigment is? Yes, while you're working yeah. on the wet uh -huh. and paper. it sticks. It'll mm -hmm. stick, and you can control it somewhat, but you still get that soft edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's that. You pull it on down and pull it on down. Okay, now I'm going to paint this pod here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you. I pod, love Pod, bud. Bud. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, so... These, ha they, they usually have this nice movement, like it's half and half, right? There's a crease in it. Yes. Where, where they're going to break open. Right. Oh, so I usually use that as my jumping off point. And um, here it comes. And, there, and there's a lot of that burnt sienna uh, color in there. So I don't have burnt sienna in my palette, but I can mix it. Mm -hmm. Permanent rose, quinacridone gold, and away we go. Very okay. good. That was yeah. a great tip. That was a good tip, yeah save a little on that pigment, but it's nice to have uh, burnt sienna in your it palette. Is. Yeah, I love that color. I, I love it. Okay. So, so this is where your bud is cracking, mm -hmm. and I guess it's going to be an orange Bite poppy. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, now, yeah, it, it could be, but some uh, it just has a little bit of that burnt sienna glow to it. Okay. Yeah, along with the green. All right. Yeah. And here's a little more yellow. Let's just pull it over here. I'm gonna go on up to the stem. So you want that color to drift right up into the stem. Mm -hmm. And nice here it connection. comes. Yeah, nice little connection. Move it around, move it around, move it around. And look at you yeah. working with a round brush. A round brush. This because is nice. Because you're working to... in a round <laughs> bud. Is that, what it, is that what it is? I don't yeah. know. I'm asking actually. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's easier for me to control and okay. I could just drop that in um, than a flat for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a, a number eight round Robert Simmons White Sable. Nice. Okay, let's put a little bit dark on this side. Ooh. Ooh. Because the, light's, the light is coming from uh, this direction. Mm -hmm. And, and there's some shadow. Yes. It's so underneath it. the poppy. Yeah, okay. Here's a hint. Here's a hint for everyone. When you lay in this many colors, so how many colors did I lay in? One, two, three, four, in this small of an area. The best tip I can give my students is, the best tip, is that you leave these colors alone. Let them mingle themselves. If you keep fiddling with them, you know what happens, right, guy? You get mud. You get mud. You, overworked you, mud. Overworked mud, and that's, that's not good. So the, the, your biggest, biggest tip is this. Put your brush down. Let it dry. Leave it alone. Leave it alone, yes. But I'm going to continue painting. I'm not going to leave this alone. Um, so I showed how to get this intricate uh, background, not intricate, but, you know, fun background, playful right. background in between the stems. And you're going to keep moving with that same technique all the way up. And you're just going to get this whole jungle look, right? Right. And I'm going to move to this next piece. And it's the, it's the final piece. It's the painting finished. And I'm going to show you a few things. Once you have all your, your you know, separate but all the way painted jungle. Yes. Okay, so you have separate sections with the colors dropped in. Now, you might look at it and go, well, you know, that might be, it's not really clear what's going on back here. Maybe, maybe you want to drop, it's just too much, it's too busy. Mm -hmm. This is too busy against, you know, the busyness of the petals. It's easy enough to fix. Right. So here we go. I'm going to show you a few hints on how to detail this out. 
Okay. So if it's too busy, you're going to show how to simplify it? Or knock something back. Or okay. Just, you know, yeah, to simplify the shapes. Right. Yeah, thank you for helping me clarify that. Now this, I think, is really pretty. I, it, yeah, it is. It, it really is. is. Okay, now th these three shapes right here, eh, not so cool. So look at, I, I can just go ahead and glaze this over, glaze this over, and just bring it on down. What a great tip. Yeah, and I like, I like this um, white area right here, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop that in. Now let's say I need it just a little bit darker, and here's your chance to see. See, it wasn't overworked. I let it dry. But exactly. Now, now you have now options. you have another. Yeah. Now you have another option. You can come in here, knock in a, a little bit of a darker movement if you like, and have that play Ooh, that very out. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Isn't what that a nice? Great tip. Yeah. Now I'm not crazy about this shape. So maybe I'll just knock that back with a little bit of a glaze. You like that shape, don't I you? Do. I, I know think you it's don't want to see it. Well, let's find a shape that we should knock back. So here we go. I'm just going to knock. Okay, let's say this is a little bit too busy because you know it's shooting up right there. Okay, so let's knock that back. You could do it with a gold. You could do it with a. a, a you can do it with any color you want. So let's let's just go ahead. And let's knock a gold right back over that and just see. Oh, nice. You know, and just go ahead and just give it a little something right there. Oh, and let's go do that too. There and you oh, go. let's do that too. I and look like at that. Now your pod. Now the pod Ooh, or the, the bud, bud. <laughs> <laughs> is really starting to show. Right. And you can see the nice shadow that I, I laid in there. And um, very nice. Yeah, I think I might even. And yeah. now squint. And Do you just squint? Okay, let's, let's yeah. squint. Okay, yeah. And do, do I need a little more? Maybe I'll just pop a little dark right there and let it drift down. Very nice, I love that. Yeah, yeah, and it then. It brings that petal forward Yeah, too. And, then, and then you can see the shaft of light coming through. Now, shadows. Shadows, I'm gonna show you a couple shadows Great. on here. And this is the, one of my favorite parts, is right at the end when you can just start knocking in some shadows, especially on, on these stems, you yes. just come along and you have a nice movement like this. Like it, it wraps around the edge of the, um, from edge to edge, mm -hmm. and it usually has a nice little movement like that. You can look back at your reference photo and sometimes the shadow just, it's really thin. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they crisscross over because there's two, two stems crisscrossing, giving uh, a shadow of this sort. And sometimes you have to knock this back to bring that stem forward see that mm -hmm. so it's playing with it look at how all, you know all your work is done right okay also one more one more stem that we didn't discuss and it's this it's this guy right here loop-de-loop -loop. okay this is a really easy stem to paint all you have to do is you move your brush a flat brush up flat brush and you go up twist it and go back up and back okay and I'm going to, and I'm going to, yeah, watch, I'll glaze this with a little bit of a yellow. It's going to go up and the flat brush twist and down. And you're going to get that perfect curve up here for that stem that's bending over with the, um, with the nice little bud. So that's about it. And, um, you know, I just had so much fun painting this wonderful uh, painting with you. It was so great to see you work your background. I think it would be fun if we put both our paintings side by side and let's compare. Sure. Okay. What I'm I loved this about one. this uh -huh. was also having the different components, the two different backgrounds, the dark and with a lot of business going on. Right. And the soft focused poppies uh -huh. and uh, making up the home. I just thought it was a lot of fun. I just think it's so interesting to see your style, my style, the results. Exactly. And, it, and, and each painting is equally as beautiful and the people at home can use both styles, right. combine them. Right, exactly. Right. A little bit of both. And I and whatever they're gonna be comfortable with working with. Exactly. Right. I would think I would think for me, if I was starting off in watercolor, seeing how you laid your yellows down, then you laid some of your blues down and then some of your greens down, you know, and bringing and gently bringing that wet into wet. 
that is such an easy technique for a new beginner um, painter, don't you think? I th of course I think that. <laughs> We're not going to say no. But also the same goes for you. Putting, a, you know, working one section and moving it along. So just dancing it, yes. with the brush. Yeah. I see that as right. being very easy for a beginner too. Right. And so. being different painters, but yet we are similar in one way, in one big way when we teach. We like to show everything. We want to give you everything so that you're not missing out on anything and we want you to try. Um, and one of the great tips that I heard uh, today mm -hmm. was leaving it alone. Leaving Putting it, alone. it down mm -hmm. and leaving it alone. Don't yeah. muck with it because you'll yeah. muck it up. <laughs> you can always fix things later, but if you don't muck it up, you don't have much to fix. Yeah. So. so, and I know when I go to teach a workshop, I will give 110% to my student. I do not leave a step out. And I think breaking this particular lesson up in four parts, showing every component, every element, as best as we can, with the two different styles, the students are gonna get twice the amount of, of lesson with one beautiful finished piece. Absolutely. So whether you're painting on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, or 300 pound cold press arches watercolor paper. It's your choice. So thanks for watching and join us next time on Art, Art to Art. Art. It's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. <laughs> 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 it. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm Joyce <laughs> Stop, stop. We're going to be our last take of it.